It's Wendy from Shiny Happy World. It's the 15th of the month, and that means there is a new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. This month, we're making this cute musk ox. So let me clarify dates because people might be watching this video at any time. When I say the 15th of the month, it's June 15th, 2020, and the pattern is available in the clubhouse right now, and it'll be exclusive to members of the Funny Faces Club through July 14th. So if you're watching this video from June 15th through the July 14th and you're in the club, go to the clubhouse, download the pattern now, it's there waiting for you. If you're not in the club and you want the pattern, you can join the club and you'll get instant access to the pattern or you can wait just a little bit longer. It'll be in the shop at Shiny Happy World. Uh, you'll just have to wait until the first week in August. That's 2020. So new musk ox, new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. Here's how we make him. Okay, you're gonna start by tracing or printing the pattern pieces onto the paper side of fusible backed adhesive. So the paper side is the smooth papery side. The adhesive side is going to be a little bit bumpy. Um, I use fuse, um, Heat and Bond Light is the brand that I use and the, the weight of adhesive that I use for all of my quilts. This is a pretty chunky pattern, so I needed two sheets uh, to get all the pieces in. So you're going to get that onto your uh, fusible adhesive. Then you're going to rough cut the pieces. And by rough cut, I mean cut a little bit roughly around all of the shapes. Um, you don't want to cut right on the lines at this point. And um, just to be clear here, this is not supposed to be a dotted line on a lot of these pieces. That's just my printer giving me trouble. So all of these are solid lines. Anywhere that you have a dotted line, like this is a deliberate dotted line at the base of the body piece, leave a little bit extra there. That's going to be the seam allowance where it tucks into the seam between the blocks. So rough cut all the pieces and then fuse it to the back side of your fabric. And just follow the instructions for whatever brand you're using. Some want steam, some don't. They have different amounts of time, so follow the instructions. Again, this is Heat and Bond Light. And let me walk you through the pieces that we have. So we've got a body piece, and I do that on the darkest fabric. And then there's the face piece. And then there is a muzzle and two horns and just a couple of eyes and nostrils. So after you get that fused down to the back side of your, of your fabric, that's when you're going to do the clean cut. So here are our clean cut pieces so that you can see them. So as you can see, the clean cut is when you cut right on the line. And what that does is it makes the shirt, makes sure that the adhesive goes right up and covers every last thread right up to that cut edge. So after you get all the pieces clean cut, and you can see here, uh, get these eyes off, where I left a little bit extra at that dotted line. Now, before we start putting anything together, you're going to want to take these markings. See how we've got the eyes and the nostrils and the mouth? Those are really useful markings, especially the eyes, because the proportions on the muskox are really weird, and it's kind of hard to get the eyes in the right place. So do yourself a favor. While the paper is still on the fabric, take it over to a window, put it up in the window, and the light shining through will allow you to see these lines really, really clearly. And just take, I just use a regular fine point Sharpie, nothing fancy, and I just make a little circle inside each of those eyes. And then on the nostrils and the mouth, I do the same thing, make little circles inside the nostrils and I draw right on the line for the mouth because I'm gonna stitch right over that. So having that be in black permanent marker is just fine. Once you get those markings transferred, now you're ready to start making, layering all the pieces down. So I've got my block here. This has already been quilted. It's quilted to the batting. And that's how I do my quilt as you go. Um, there's gonna be a link in the pattern to how to, um, how the, the general method that I use, how I sew all the blocks together after they're done. But I do the quilting first so I don't have to quilt around the applique. Then you peel off the paper backing and your left, you can see the adhesive, it's all shiny. The adhesive is fused to that fabric. 
and put that down. And this guy, I am going to center in the block. Sometimes I put my critters to one side or another, but this guy, I'm going to center. And I line up that cut edge on the bottom with the cut edge at the bottom of the block. Next up is going to be his face. Peel off that backing. And then you can really play around a lot with the face. I'm going to tip it a little bit sideways and it should go. There's not a lot of play up and down to where it goes. You'll see, remember, a quarter of an inch here is going to be in your seam allowance. So you can't let that go down too low. So really kind of right up in here, very close, about a finger's width down from the top of the body. And I've turned that sideways. Now I'm going to put the muzzle in. And that goes bit down very low down near his bushy beard. And if you've got his head turned, you want to make sure to turn the muzzle too. Now I'm going to go ahead and put his eyes and his nostrils in because I really like how he comes to life with the eyes. So there's one eye. The eyes are the smaller ovals that you have. Once you cut them apart, the labels go separated. So the eyes are the smaller ones. And then we've got a couple of nostrils. And their nostrils kind of come down at an angle. It's so much fun to me to research photographs of these animals uh, in order to draw their in order to draw their patterns. But their nostrils kind of come down like that. And then we just have the horns. And the horns are pretty easy to place. They kind of, they meet in the center of the head and then they come down and they kind of follow, see how there's the curve at the top of the head here? They kind of follow that curve at the top of the head. Don't let the head peek out because then you're gonna to have to have an edge that you're gonna to have to outline and that's gonna be a pain in the butt. So just, whoops, and these are too far off center. There we go. And then the second horn is gonna do the same thing it's going to follow this other side of the head and it's okay for the horns to overlap a little bit in the middle. Their horns actually look like one single horn coming out. Um, there's, there's horn growth behind them as well. But I do like having that little bit of head peeking up there. So that looks like the angle is right for the angle that I've decided to tip his head. And you don't have to tip your head. You can do it straight. You can do it angled the other direction. But I like him kind of looking quizzically at us in that direction. So now I've got everything where I want it. I do one more check and just make sure I'm happy with all of the pieces. And then I'm gonna take it over to the ironing board and fuse it down. And again, follow the package instructions because the instructions for fusing it down to your final block may be different than the instructions just for attaching it to the back of the fabric. So make sure you read your instructions and are following those so you get a good solid fuse on there. I'm going to fuse it down and then I'll bring uh, take it and do all of the outline stitching and then I'll bring it back and show you the order in which I did that stitching. Okay, here he is all fused down and all stitched uh, outline stitched around each of the pieces. I don't do satin stitching. I like to do just a straight stitch in black thread and I go around it three times and I try actually not to go exactly on my lines before. Sometimes I forget and I space out and I just go right on the line. But I actually like to get a little bit of um, where you can see the different lines because I want it to have a little bit of a scribbly kind of sketchbook look. So this is the path that I took for this guy. I always uh, really think about ahead of time the way that I'm going to do my stitching so that I don't have to stop and tie off and start again. Uh, I, can, I can keep that to a minimum. So on this guy I started on his horns and I started a little bit before that bit of his head there and I went around this horn three times, three times, and then I went across here one, two, three, and then I went around this horn three times, two, Three. Then I tied off. Then I did the top of his body. This is a big hump behind his head. And I started down here and I went around once, twice, three times and tied off. Then I did the lower part of his body once, twice, three times. And then I did not tie off. 
I just carried it over on the bottom, just stitched all along the bottom of his body. That's going to be hidden in the seam allowance. And then went one, two, three times and tied off. Now there's not a whole lot of trickiness you can do around his face. I started here around his face and went once, twice, three times and tied off. And then three times around the muzzle and tied off. I get a little bit tricky with the mouth. So I start at the top and I go down and then I go over to one side, that's one pass, and then back, that's a second pass. And then I start heading in this direction and back. That's two times on the mouth part. And then I go again all the way to this side, all the way to this side, and back to the center. So that's four rows of stitching on the mouth. Up here, that's a second row of stitching on that down stroke, and then I just do another back and up for four there so that it matches the thickness of his mouth, and I tie off. I only go once around each of the nostrils and the eyes because it's black thread on a black uh, applique, and you can't see the stitching anyway. So I did want to point out one other thing. This is a new fabric. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the fabrics. I've got some other colors to show you. This is the um, Rainbow Sherbet background block from the Rainbow Sherbet bundle. And this is some of the new fabrics for the Warm Neutrals bundle. I always have a Warm Neutrals bundle in my shop that's a range of browns from very light to dark and a range of grays from light to dark and then i also always have a gold and a, like a foxy orange in there but this the act the exact fabrics in that bundle change pretty frequently because fabrics go out of print all the time this is the first block that i've made with these new fabrics and i just wanted to talk a little bit about this fabric so it has a direction, it's kind of like a, a grain of wood, or I think of it like little zebra stripes, like very, very small scale zebra stripes. And I kept that striping in mind when I placed the applique pieces. So you'll see his body, this background, the striping goes up and down. On his face, I made sure that the striping went diagonal. I wanted it to contrast with the body. The muzzle, it goes sideways across the muzzle. And the horns, I made it go kind of running the length of the horn on each horn. So they have a, they, it angles this direction. So when you have a fabric that has a direction to it, really think about the direction that, how you position your, um, your fusible paper pieces to get, make the most out of that and add the most interest that you can to your block. So that, is the pastel, the, the rainbow sherbet, and the warm neutrals. Now I'll show you that blue guy. I, you saw the pieces earlier in the video. So here you can see them all made up. This guy makes me think of Babe the Blue Ox from the Paul Bunyan stories. So this uses warm neutrals batiks in the background. Same range of colors as the regular warm neutrals bundle, but it's all in batiks, which make great backgrounds. And then this is the, the face on him, his body, the muskox, is um, all from the Rainbow Brights Fat Quarter Bundle. And I really like this one because it looks like, there are some, some artists I follow on Instagram who take their drawings and cartoon figures and photograph them in the real world. And I love this uh, kind of crayon bright cartoony muskox on this very natural background. I think this is actually going to be a really fun quilt when I get those all made. I'm going to do a whole quilt, different animals, with this same kind of color scheme. So I've got a couple more options here. So this one uses, the background is from a new uh, rainbow bundle that I have called the Muted Rainbow, and it is all exactly what it sounds like, muted versions of the rainbow colors. And then for the, for the, um, Muskox himself, all of these are from the, the new Rainbow Batiks fabric bundle. And Batiks are really, really great to use for applique with fusible adhesive for two reasons. One, Batiks tend to have a very, very tight weave, which makes them not fray much at all around the edges. They also, because they're the, of the nature of how they're made, they are not printed on the surface of the fabric. It's dyed all the way through. So if there is any fraying, this fabric looks exactly the same on the back as it does on the front. So it's not printed on a white fabric base, it is orange all the way through. So if any fraying happens, the threads are also orange. And so 
you almost don't notice any fraying that does happen. So I really like how this guy turned out and I'm going to be doing a whole quilt also with different animals showing muted rainbow in the background and the rainbow bright batiks in the and, and the appliques. And I've got one more. This one uses that rainbow batiks for the background block instead of for the applique. And then the applique uses fabrics from a few different fat quarter bundles that I have. This is the dots. It's a hash dot collection. This is gingham play and the muzzle and the horns. I wanted a third shade of kind of orangey gold in there. So these are from the rainbow bright fat quarter bundle. And I like how that looks too. I love having contrast between the background being one type of fabric, in this case, a batik, and then this, the, the appliques being a print, um, a kind of more, a more clearly defined print as opposed to the modeled kind of look of the batik. And that is it. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and I'll see you next month with a new Funny Faces block.